Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, in this presentation, what we're going to do is we're going to provide you information regarding tax credits. And we're going to give you a brief overview. What I would strongly suggest, and I do suggest this strongly, is there is a software, Tome, T O M E dot A P P. I'm going to put the link underneath this video, it will be the first link. I would like for you to do me a favor. I would like you to set up an account with Tome. It is free. I'm also going to put the third link. I want you to follow me. The third link underneath this video, there will be three links. The first one is for you to go in through my link to set up an account with Tome. If you have believed that the information on this site has helped you in any way, please do me that favor. Sign up with Tome. I need them to apply to credits. You're automatically going to get credits by signing up, but I will get credit for bringing you to their attention. Now, before I continue, let me explain this briefly. I contacted the company yesterday because the software was a little bit difficult to operate. So, what I have done is I found a video on YouTube. That's going to be the Third link is going to show you about how to use Tome. The second link is going to show you how to access the credit information that we're talking about. And the first link is setting up a Tome account. So the third link is going to show you how to use Tome, but I'm going to do a video later showing you exactly how I did this and how I put this together. Then I'm going to do in that video, which will happen in about a week, how you can set up a, your own presentation where it will literally read this information for you. Ta-da! Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people have been asking about tax credits and how to speak to their tax preparers or how to do it themselves. Many people don't do their taxes. They don't understand taxes. Taxes are too complicated. That's so, at least we thought. So you're going to get a brief understanding, a brief explanation now so that you get it. Then... We're going to reveal something that we're doing for our people who are part of our programs, something that they had no knowledge that was being applied to them, but they're now getting an understanding. One moment, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you must understand is the nature of these tax credits. The nature of these tax credits is that they come from a loss an expense, a debt. It is not a capital gain. Although it sounds like it's a positive, it's actually a negative. In what sense? Well, the credits come from a bad debt, the negative. When they are transferred to you or when you cancel a debt and write it off, it becomes a positive because you've canceled it, you've forgiven the individual, and the law rewards you for helping to relieve the United States of its debt burden and its public debt. That's why there is something known as the Bureau of Public Debt. You're helping to reduce the tax burden of the United States by forgiving debt. As it says here on the screen, tax credits a lifelong financial burden lifted. So, ladies and gentlemen, the debt is what provides a lot of struggle. However, when you forgive the debt, that burden is lifted from your shoulders. You no longer are straddled with that. Transferable tax credits as a result of bad debts. The reason why taxes in the form of tax credits can be transferred after it has been documented is because they are property. The same way you can transfer ownership of property in a real estate or real property, you can transfer ownership of what's known as intangible property. When you transfer these tax credits, which are the result of a bad debt, 
an expenditure, an expense, a forgiven debt or cancellation of debt, it is not construed or considered as a capital gain. Let's say that again. It is not considered as a capital gain, thus there are no taxes assessed associated with such a transfer. This information right here, many of you should have a better understanding. It's read from right down, then over to left. You may not understand how tax credits work when they are from a bad debt. So here is a link to the IRS website on bad debt deductions. And you literally just copy and paste it or just type in Google IRS tax topic 453, bad debt deductions, and go to the irs.gov website for that information. This will explain that an individual can deduct their wages, their salaries, their rents, their dividends, interest and like items. These are not our words. This is exactly what the IRS mentions in that particular communication. What they do not tell you is that if you are not using the cash method, the only other method available is the accrual method. If you utilize the accrual method, and you can do that as a sole proprietorship by filling out a 3115 form. We will talk about the 3115 form in a moment. But if you wrote off your taxes and you filed your taxes using the accrual method, what's the accrual method? It's basically positive and negatives. Positive ledger, negative ledger. You're just simply going to create two ledgers. You're going to call one of them debits. You're going to call the other one credits. And for each debt, debit, you're going to write it down for each thing that you've paid out, each expenditure, including your wages, your salaries, your rents, your dividends, your interests, and like items. And on the other, the credit side, you're going to write the exact same thing. Your debit is going to be indicated with a negative in front of each of the dollar amounts, and the credit section will be indicated with a positive side. That will, just for the sake of this conversation, be called your ledger of accounting. You're going to do what's known as offset. You're going to offset the positive, offset the negative. Now, let's continue. Yes, there are, there's more to the accrual method, but if for the sake of you documenting your credits and for the sake of you documenting the accrual method, that is the method you're going to use. Why? Because your method of accounting is yours. Let me say that again. Your method of accounting is yours. Now, you can't be outlandish with it and you can't be unreasonable with it, but your method of accounting is your method of accounting. We'll continue. However, the key point to take away is that bad debts are deductible on taxes. These are what are known as transferable tax credits as a result of bad debts. So, you will not be able to transfer the credits once you receive them due to the fact that you are not part of the company that acquired them. For instance, if you all have received tax credits from SATCOM, if you've received them from TTOPP SATCOM, then that means that, yes, you can transfer those credits because you are members of the organization. That's why you were referred to as SATPAC members. If you receive tax credits and you did not receive it from an organization for which you are a part of, then you are stuck with the credits. You cannot transfer them. They can only be transferred once. We'll talk about that in a second. And so the law restricts transferring them a second time. So you cannot transfer them a second time. Now, IRS Tax Topic 407, Business Income Internal Revenue Service at irs.gov, in order for you to realize the complete benefits of tax credit, you will not have to change your accounting method for writing. Uh, for writing them off. It's supposed to be W-R-I-T-I-N-G. And I apologize for the typo. So let's see if we can change that. And we'll take care of that now.
you will not have to change your accounting method for writing them off as a business expense. Look at that. Did you see that? Pay attention, everyone. This, this is very important. These are not our words. This is the IRS. In order for you to realize the complete benefits of tax credits, you will not have to change your accounting method for writing them off as a business expense because these credits are supposed to be are the result are the result of it's supposed to be a debt when recording them on schedule c income tax forms you will need to record them as a business expense because they come from a business bad debt as noted in the aforementioned irs tax topic 453 and as an expense you will not be straddled with any tax liability as a result of receiving this transfer this transfer does not constitute a capital gain and is non-taxable. So you will not be taxed on the credits. Filing and paying your business taxes, Internal Revenue Service, and this is IRS Tax Topic 453 again. If you apply IRS Tax Topic 453 for any debt and or losses that you incur, you will have to utilize the following form for changing the reporting method. And again, that's the IRS tax topic, uh, excuse me, IRS form 3115. But again, you will not have to do the IRS form 3115 if you're receiving transfer tax credits. You only have to do the IRS form 3115 if you yourself are the one reporting the taxes, transferring the taxes, and documenting the bad debt on your end. But if it is being documented by someone else and transferred to you, you do not have to change your accounting method. You just have to report it on your Schedule C. Now, IRS 315 form, for the sake of receiving the credits and applying them, you will not need to change your accounting method unless you're writing off other bad debts, whereby you can only receive the full benefits if you are using what's known as the accrual method accounting under GAAP, Generally Acceptable Accounting Practice Guidelines. With that being said, if you're wondering why you're receiving this, those of you who receive tax credits that are as a result of the documented credits received by TTOPP through myself, it is because the God that I serve has allowed me to understand these things and a process known as arbitration under the Federal Arbitration Act. Many of you are aware that an arbitrator, when they make a decision and the parties are a party to a contract whereby an arbitrator has been assigned, that the arbitrator's decision is law of the contract, is law of the parties. The Arbitration Act combined with the basic contact law, the way that process works is that you amend a contract with another party for whom you do business, known as a notice of change in terms of agreement, and you incorporate an arbitration clause into this change in terms of agreement. And upon breach of that agreement, an arbitrator makes a determination as to whether or not there has been a breach and what dollar amount to assign to such a breach. I have been able to successfully document over 24 different breaches in 24 substantial contracts. And although the other party has been forgiven of their debt, the scriptures require us to forgive others of their debts. And the United States recognizes this biblical principle under the cancellation of debt procedures that can be found in the 1099 section of the code, Form 1099A. And Form 1099-A is a federal tax form lenders submit to the IRS whenever they acquire property as a result of foreclosure and when it has been abandoned. The 1099-C is a notice to the IRS that a financial institution has forgiven or canceled a debt of $600 or more if both forms are filed, Box 4, 5, and 7 on Form C should not be completed. Now, they say it should not be completed. There's no law that says it can't be completed. It's the same thing as 4, 5, and 7 
on Schedule A. But I would suggest you do more research. When you go here, all you have to do, and I want you to watch this. See that number three? Oh, it won't let me do it. Sorry. It is a link, so you are able to click on it. But I'm not able to click on it now, and that's because I'm in the document. When you are editing the document or looking at the document, you'll be able to click on these links. They are links. Okay, the transfer collateral and foreclosure or deed in lieu of the required 1099 form, but it says not always a 1099-C. Here's the thing. They've combined the 1099-C and the 1099-A forms. That is the forms that you utilize to forgive a debt. 1099-A. Just in case any of you are wondering, it says abandonment of property. Please understand the 1099A and its instructions tells you that it is for informational purposes only. It's just to inform. So it's for informational purposes. The C is for cancellation of debt. The 1099A, 1099C must go together. And that is our opinion. Okay. Nevertheless, to say you do not need to educate yourself on these things to the fullest extent, just to, uh, uh, nevertheless, needless to say, you don't need to educate yourself to the fullest extent on this information. You just need to understand the basic premise that an arbitrator's decision is binding upon the parties to an agreement, and the award is final and actionable. Now, the part that I am reading in quotations here is actually taking from the actual law and other sites that talk about this. An arbitrator's decision is binding on the parties to the agreement and a final award is actionable. These are the links that you will have. Binding arbitration requires the parties to accept the arbitrator's decision as final, limiting their right to appeal. However, parties can mutually agree to withdraw their case from the arbitrator at any time before the award is issued by the arbitrator. I am adding this information, which includes hyperlinks, if you are using a word processor system such as Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office, so that you can go directly to the documentation and see, determine for yourself that the transferring of tax credits after the issuance of an arbitration award is a lawful and legal process. Ladies and gentlemen, the basic of tax credits is there are several types of tax credits and there are several benefits for tax credits. There are limitations on certain types of tax credits. As we've told you about one limitation, you can't transfer it more than once. Okay, what is the eligibility? Now, this right here says conclusion. I have to get rid of this because this is not the conclusion. I've extended the document. Back to the issue of tax credits. They are called tax credits because once the year for the deduction, when you file them as a bad debt deduction, once that year of your filing as a bad debt deduction has elapsed, let's say the debt became payable and due in 2019. Well, we're in 2022. So since we're in 2022, we literally have to take those credits that were due in 2019 and bring them forward or carry them forward to 2022. That means they operate as a tax credit or a bad debt deduction carry forward. The tax credits, because once you do that, the party electing to carry them forward, they thus become a credit. The tax credits are dollar for dollar in the reduction of any liability, but because they are dollar for dollar, they are dollars. Which basically means that when you file your taxes and these are recorded with your taxes, you will receive a refund if the proper agent who's filing your taxes is asked to get you the most substantial refund possible and if they document the tax credits and or debt, uh, cancellation of debt information on the Schedule C as they are required in the other forms that are associated there too. We're going to pause right here for a second. We told you about the young lady who took her tax credits of $70,000 to her tax preparer. He wrote them off on a Schedule C as an expense because they are an expense. They are a loss, so it's an expense. When he did that, he said it came from a private foundational trust organization, which it did. And she received a refund after the liability of taxes was taken care of. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are sat packers, uh, excuse me, not sat packers, but those of you who are part of the 
AmeriLegion program and the Save Our Homes program. Many of you will find that we are going to make a transfer of credits on your behalf because you are now part of the trust organization. That's why there is a trustee associated with the organization. And because you are part of the trust organization, the trustee has the responsibility of paying the debts of the parties to the trust. And so we're going to make that tender of payment. And as we stated before, once tax credits are transferred, they cannot be returned, nor can they be transferred again. And you will have that as evidence to go into any court to document that you have transferred the credits to that agency and are no longer liable because tax credits are dollar for dollar. We'll continue. Back to the issue of tax credits. They are called tax credits because once the year for the deduction is elapsed, they are carried forward. We've read that, so we're going to continue to read. To the next year at the election of the party, thus becoming a credit. The tax credits are dollar for dollar reduction in any tax liability, which basically means that when you file your taxes and these are properly recorded with your taxes on Schedule C or other related forms, you will receive a refund. The proper tax agent can get you the most substantial refund. You'll receive a refund for any taxes you've paid out that year that you've documented on your tax filing. It is very important that you document if you're receiving tax credits, all of your taxes. And if you owe anything, it will be taken out of the credits as a result of the Treasury Offset Program. It's called TOP. So go look in Google, type in Treasury TOP, and you will see what that program is and why it is essential and how and why it will work for everybody owing child support. The basics of tax credits. Now, tax credits are a form of financial assistance that can help reduce a person's tax burden. The amount of tax credit is subtracted directly from the amount of taxes a person owes. Because the credits originated from a business bad debt deduction, they may only be categorized as a business expense, net operating loss, sorry, I got to put the comma, business bad debt. Okay? We don't get, we don't do, or we just do business bad debts may be categorized as a business expense net operating loss if they are totally worthless. Who determines if they are totally worthless? Whoever the business is. To do so, the debt must have been created and acquired in a trade or business or closely related to it when it became partially or totally worthless. That's why you're doing it as a sole proprietor when you're writing off bad debt and it's business related or your intentions was for it to be business related and when you made it totally worthless. An accounting entry should be made to reduce accounts receivables and increase bad debt expenses for the total of debts written off for the year. The total of all debts can be deducted on the business tax return. Types of tax credits. Tax credits are divided into two types, refundable and non-refundable. Bad debt deductions are considered as non-refundable in the year for which the deduction became due. However, refundable in certain circumstances in the year that they are carried forward. You'll have to do some research on that as to how to acquire that. A refundable tax credit is one that can be used to reduce a person's tax burden to zero and the remaining amount shall be refunded to the taxpayer. There are a few forms that are needed for writing off bad business debt deductions when filing taxes. The IRS form 8949, many of you will not have to do that because you don't have items that you're selling. And if you don't have items in house that you're selling, you will not need the 8949, according to the IRS. Must be accompanied and submitted. For non-business bad debts, the reporting process is pretty straightforward. Now, remember, if you're doing a non-business bad debt, you can't claim all of the bad debt deductions. That's why you do it as a sole proprietor, so that you can claim the total amount. This gives you a scenario of A, B, C, and D as to how they communicate with each other and what amounts to a debt and so forth. So we're going to let you read that in your time. 
and we're going to go here. Ladies and gentlemen, the benefits of tax credits is that we'll get rid of this. Uh, well, reduce a person's tax burden and can help them keep more of their hard-earned money. Tax credits can also be used to offset the cost of certain items, such as tuition and medical expenses. It says tax credits can be used to offset certain items. How do you do that? How do you offset your medical expenses with tax credits? That's the point that we're making here because they let you know that it is possible. Just remember, when speaking to your tax preparer, they may not be familiar with the term tax credits with respect to bad debt deductions. They may not be aware that a bad debt deduction, when used for the year in which the deduction becomes available, it may be carried forward and or carried back, carried back only to the extent of five years, or carried forward is extended indefinitely. According to the available information, you will simply have to inform them of these credits. They are from bad debts and must be written off as an expense on Schedule C and any other appropriate form. You will be required to explain that to them. Limitations on tax credits is here. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I'm sorry, we have to get to the conclusion part. I apologize. Finally, in conclusion is this section where we highlight the fact that is it possible to convert tax credits into currency? We provided this section and information for you so that you can go through it. So if I may explain once again, the first link underneath the video is the link to Tome for you to sign up. Remember, if you sign up, I will get credits and you will get credits automatically. I'm asking if you've had or benefited, and I, you know I've never asked this before, None of you can say that I've ever asked you to do anything like this before. So if I'm asking you to do it now, it must be important to me. And if you appreciate the information that i just given you because nobody else was willing to give you this information, I didn't read everything because I want you all, I want to keep it under 30 minutes and I want you all to go and read it for yourself and to see how to do your taxes when writing off your business bad debt or transferable bad debt deducted carry forward tax credits that you received from TTOPP. That's why we're doing this. The second link will be the link for this so that you can read it for yourself. And the third link will be a link to a video explaining this information. Ladies and gentlemen, people have been asking me for doing a video explaining this. I believe I have for the last three hours did the best I could for a moment. Now, Tome will allow me to do a video having it explain all of this, but I just didn't want to go through the whole weekend doing that and not get this information out to you as soon as possible. So thank you all for paying attention and listening to the information, and I hope it finds a benefit to each one of you. Have a very good day.